Welcome back to my channel, Health Fitness 1047. Today, we quick you a good day. And then, here is this episode new. One, Laura Dern reveals she runs her romantic life and everything by BFF Reese Witherspoon speaking about the inspiring network she's cultivated over the years that have guided her life decisions. Dern pinpointed Witherspoon as particularly influential. Basically I run everything by Reese, Dern told the crowd during a panel on the day, according to People. From my romantic life all the way to what jobs I should do. We produced a barbecue last week, Witherspoon said, to which Dern responded, we did. Dern, who stars in HBO's Big Little Lies as Renata Klein, added that Jane Fonda is another person who has provided guidance over time. What I learned from the four or five women who raised me. Who were actresses who then became writers or producers or directors, was that there was no community. There was no inside without each other. Dern explained Jane Fonda being one. Along with my mother and an amazing group of women who decided they had to be the storytellers to be in the story at all, and they are true pioneers that led us to understand that in a second image. Presumably taken after the party, the women ditched their heels and appeared completely wiped. For fans who enjoy seeing Dern and Witherspoon together in Big Little Lies. A third season of the show was confirmed by one of its other stars, Nicole Kidman, in November 2023. I loved Big Little Lies because it sort of came along at a time in my life when I had my children and I was thinking I was going to retire, Kidman, 57. Explained during a November 17th Q&A session at a Florida event hosted by the LPGA during the CME Group Tour Championship, per deadline. And then this situation came along where Reese Witherspoon and I were able to produce that show and create that show and then all of you watched it and made it a massive success. 2. Minnesota Vikings Cameron Bynum and Josh Metellus show off Parent Trap handshake on field after intercepting New York Jets quarterback Aaron Rodgers pass during the Sunday October 6 game. Held at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in London, Bynum teamed up with Metellus to pay homage to the film Bynum went on to explain the decision behind the handshake. Noting that it has a special place in his heart. We're on a generational celebration run right now, three weeks in a row, Bynum explained. Per Sports Illustrated but this might have been one of my favorites just because that's one of my favorite movies and it's based in London. As soon as I knew we were playing in London, and I watched that movie last week, I'm like, this is it. That's one of my favorite movies and I had to shout out to London for that one. The Vikings ultimately defeated the Jets 23-17 on Sunday. Bynum and Metellus may have been the first to try their hand at the moves on the NFL field, but the handshake has been replicated by fans over the years. While reflecting on the 23rd anniversary of the film in 2021, director Nancy Myers wrote via Instagram that she has enjoyed all of your DMs, photos, parties, costumes, handshake videos and just general sweetness. 3. Keanu Reeves makes pro auto racing debut, spins out on Indianapolis Speedway Reeves, 60. Hit the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the Toyota GR Cup Series on Saturday, October 5, in his first professional race ahead of the event. The Indianapolis Motor Speedway shared footage via Instagram of Reeves before and after driving his car around the track. Reeves was spotted with his girlfriend, Alexandra Grant.
At the MotoGP Liqua Moli Motorrad Grand Prix Deutschland in July for a rare public outing for Sabrina Carpenter explains why she cast boyfriend Barry Kogan in, Please Please Please, video in an interview with CBS Sunday Morning, the singer, 25, explained that she picked Kogan, 31. Because he's such a great actor, he likes the song, which is great, says Carpenter. He does like my music a lot, yeah, although Carpenter has never given any juicy details of their relationship away. She has previously gushed about her man's acting talents. I don't want to sound biased, but I think he's one of the best actors of this generation, she told Variety. So getting to see him on the screen with my song as the soundtrack made the video better and all the more special. And in an interview with The Guardian in August. She said working together was one of the best experiences I've ever had, too. Adding, I'm very honored and I got to work with such a great actor, before mocking herself for being so coy about the whole thing. 4. Sabrina Carpenter explains why she cast boyfriend Barry Kogan in, Please Please Please, video in an interview with CBS Sunday Morning, the singer, 25, explained that she picked Kogan, 31. Because he's such a great actor, he likes the song, which is great, says Carpenter. He does like my music a lot, yeah, although Carpenter has never given any juicy details of their relationship away. She has previously gushed about her man's acting talents. I don't want to sound biased, but I think he's one of the best actors of this generation, she told Variety. So getting to see him on the screen with my song as the soundtrack made the video better and all the more special. And in an interview with The Guardian in August. She said working together was one of the best experiences I've ever had, too. Adding, I'm very honored and I got to work with such a great actor, before mocking herself for being so coy about the whole thing. 5. Sister Wives Recap Cody says he's not abandoning kids. Claims some betrayed him, after splits in the divorce, the ugly finger of blame has come out, Cody, 55, said during the Sunday October 6th of Sister Wives. I had four wives. I was at your house. Though, because the other wife was complaining that I was at your house, Cody quipped during a confessional. Cody shares one child with first wife Mary, 53, who confirmed their separation in January 2023. He welcomed six children with second wife Janelle, 55, before they parted ways in December 2022. Cody also shares six kids with third wife Christine. 52, who was the first to leave him in November 2021 Cody adopted Robin's three kids from a prior marriage as well. As Cody began navigating the loss of his plural marriages, many of Christine and Janelle's kids began to pull away from their dad. According to Cody, some of them have flat-out rejected me since the breakups. They're purposefully leaving me out of their lives to punish me for a crime I did not commit. Cody told Robin, 45, during the episode. Cody then clarified that he never said that I don't love Janelle, even if their daughter Maddie claimed he did. This is some rumor that was created in the family that just sows division, Cody told the cameras, alleging, our family was killed by gossip. Robin, however, couldn't wrap her head around Cody not taking more initiative in reconnecting with his kids during their time of need. I'm not abandoning my children, Cody insisted. Robin explained that no matter what, they are Cody's kids and he needs to step up. I think that Cody should be camping out on their doorsteps and saying, Hey, you're going to talk to me, Robin told the cameras Cody confessed that his heart is broken after all the upheaval in their plural family. Telling Robin he wants to get in a better place with her and then focus on the kids. 6. Roswell, original cast, where are they now? Roswell's legacy still looms large, two decades later. The series, based on the Roswell Haya books by Melinda Metz, debuted on October 6, 1999. 
Sherry Appleby, Mahandra Delfino, Colin Hanks and Nick Weschler played high school teens in Roswell, New Mexico, who befriended a trio of teenage alien-human hybrids, played by Katherine Heigl. Jason Bear and Brendan Fair The show ran for two seasons on the WB and one on UPN before airing its series finale on May 14, 2002. A Roswell, New Mexico reboot starring Janine Mason and Nathan Dean Parsons aired on The CW between 2019 and 2022. Appleby and Bear both made cameos in the new series but played different characters than their Og Liz and Max. Bear starred in the horror films The Grudge and Skinwalkers. The Minnesota native also appeared in recurring roles during Season 2 of Roswell, New Mexico in 2020 and Season 6 of Supergirl in 2021. Bear married actress Katie Strickland in 2006 later welcoming son Atticus in 2013. Heigl graduated from Roswell to Grey's Anatomy, playing Dr. Izzy Stevens in six seasons of the hit ABC drama. She also became a rom-com star in the late 2000s with starring roles in Knocked Up, 27 Dresses and The Ugly Truth. The series was renewed for a second season in May 2021. Heigl and her husband, Musician Josh Kelly, relocated from California to Utah with kids Naley, Adelaide and Joshua. Delfino's post-Roswell career includes starring roles on the TV comedies State of Georgia and Friends with Better Lives. She also guest-starred on Boston Public, The Office and BoJack Horseman and reunited with Heigl in the film Life as We Know It. Seven Suits star Sarah Rafferty wants Meghan Markle to join show's rewatch podcast. Everybody's invited. Everybody's invited, and everybody has been so supportive. Rafferty, who starred as Donna Paulson on the hit USA Network series, which ran from 2011 to 2019, and also starred Markle as Rachel Zane, told the outlet in an interview published on Sunday, October 6. Rafferty added that she'd been in contact with several members of the Suits cast and crew to discuss being a part of the SiriusXM podcast, which launched on September 24. I've just been texting one of our directors, Mike Smith. Rachel Harris had some comments on our Instagram live this morning. Cannot wait for Sheila Saj to be introduced into the show, Rafferty explained the podcast, which has released two episodes so far, involves Rafferty and Adams, 43, sharing behind-the-scenes memories of their time on the show. While Markle is now officially on the host's wish list, the Duchess of Sussex has already been a topic of conversation for Rafferty and Adams. During the Tuesday, October 1st episode, Adams revealed he and Markle who is married to Prince Harry and shares son, Archie, five, and daughter, Lilibet, three, with him, shared chemistry from the moment they first read the show's script together. It was pretty clear, if I remember correctly, that she was going to get the part from the minute we did the chemistry read. Adams shared during the episode the actor, who is married to actress Troyan Belisario, spoke about how he and Markle had worked together previously on a failed pilot titled Good Behavior. He noted that their chemistry was a result of the bond they formed prior to joining Team Suits. When I went in to do the chemistry reads with Rachel, was right there and she said, Hi, the Take Me Out actor recalled of his Suits audition. During Markle and Adam's time on Suits, the pair were romantically involved with working at a legal firm eight. Madonna and brother Christopher Saccone's relationship, close bond. Estrangement and reconciliation Christopher's family confirmed to us weekly that the dancer, author and interior designer had died of cancer on Friday, October 4, in Michigan surrounded by family. Including his husband, Ray Thacker however. Madonna's rise to fame ultimately soured their relationship, creating distance and resentment Madonna mourned her brother's death via Instagram.
Calling Christopher the closest human to me for so long, in her tribute Christopher was very involved in the early years of his sister's career as a dancer, a dresser and a creative consultant. He shared in his memoir, Life with My Sister Madonna, that he had moved to New York City in the 1980s to be her backup dancer, even appearing in the music video for her single, Lucky Star, in 1984. In an interview with The Guardian, Christopher confided that he, at times, found working for his sister to be beneath him after developing his own career in New York as an artist however. The Like a Virgin singer looked outside the family for the Drowned World Tour in 2001, hiring choreographer Jamie King as director instead. It was around that time that Madonna married Guy Ritchie who Christopher claimed further strained his relationship with the pop star. It gave people an opportunity to think of me as a creative person, as an artist and not just as Madonna's brother. Which is a tag I'm going to wear forever, Christopher said in 2012. But I'm hopeful that at some point it will be Christopher Sacconi first. In an interview with The Standard, Christopher shared that his relationship with Madonna was on a perfectly personable level right now, adding, as far as I'm concerned, we're good. He said, we're in contact with each other. Although I haven't seen her for a long time, we're back to being a brother and sister. Christopher and Madonna's oldest brother, Anthony Sacconi, died of respiratory failure and throat cancer. He was 66. Madonna mourned Christopher's death via Instagram on October 6, sharing a series of photographs of the two siblings throughout the year. We did not speak for some time but when my brother got sick. Nine. Charlie XCX leaks Brat Remix album details via fan. Includes huge collabs with the 1975 and Lord while performing at the Kia Center in Orlando as part of her sellout sweat tour with Australian singer-songwriter Troy Savon. The iconic 360 singer thrust a piece of paper at a fan in the front row, before ordering them to post it on social media after the show. This is the tracklist with all the features, the star, 32. Told the hyped-up crowd. Since Brat was the album of the summer, creating a whole movement, the update, featuring a ton of A-list collabs, has been the subject of fevered speculation and excitement for months but, thanks to the singer now kindly leaking the full list last night in Orlando, her fans now know all the details. Like the fact that the 360 remix features singer Robin and rapper Young Lean, while Grande guest stars on Sympathy is a Knife. 10. Nikki Garcia claims Artem Chigvintsev grew increasingly angry after being cut from DWTS in the document, which was filed and granted by a judge on Monday, September 30th. Garcia, 40, claimed that Chigvintsev, 42, tackled her multiple times and shoved her to the ground while their son, Mateo, 4, was present, according to docs obtained by TMZ. According to Garcia, the interaction resulted from Chigvintsev reportedly not being asked to return for Dancing with the Stars season 33, which resulted in him growing increasingly angry, snapping at me and yelling. Us Weekly confirmed in August that the pro dancer would not appear on the ABC competition's new season, which premiered last month. The restraining order goes on to claim that Garcia was tackled by Chigvintsev outside Mateo's room after she followed them upstairs. After follow-up attempts to enter her son's room, Garcia claimed her ex forcibly pushed her into their bedroom and pressed his hands down on her chest. Garcia stated in the filing that she felt like she was suffocating. A judge reportedly ruled that Chigvintsev is prohibited from being within 100 yards of Garcia and their son in their former shared home, with the exception of court-ordered visits. The judge also ruled that Garcia cannot leave the country with Mateo until a full hearing is held on October 21. This can confirm that Chigvintsev filed a restraining order of his own against Garcia on Thursday, October 3, in the Superior Court of Napa.
In her filing, Garcia requested sole legal and physical custody of Mateo and listed their date of separation as August 29. Chigvintsev filed a response on September 13, asking for joint legal and physical custody of Mateo, requesting spousal support and asking Garcia to pay his attorney fees and costs. Napa County District Attorney Allison Haley shared in a September 24 statement that Chigvintsev would not be charged with domestic violence after a thorough review of the case was completed. I am incredibly relieved and grateful that the domestic violence charges against me have been dropped, Chigvintsev wrote in an Instagram story statement the following day Chigvintsev's attorney Alona. Antonian claimed to us in a September 25 statement that the dancer was not the primary aggressor in the August 29 incident. Adding, I believe that to be true even if the burden of proof would be the preponderance of evidence, which is the standard of proof in family court.